morning nerds what's up cool here the wheat nerd sunday the 6th of january We've got some cool stuff to show you guys we're going to be converting the main bedroom over to a uh, black sail uh, 10 inch cannons uh, he comes to visit uh, it's pretty cool um, we go to the aquarium which is pretty cool and just spend a lot of time growing some cannabis so before we do that you know what time it is get your bowls your bongs your big fat joints your hookahs your dab rigs your nectar collectors your volcanoes and earl dabs sidecars it's time to get high with weed oil. Today on the show, we're going to talk about cloning transition. It's something I've spent a lot of time on, got a lot of input on it. Also, talk about um, some cool stuff. I mean, I saw uh, cannabis is being sold for basically nothing in Oregon um, because a lot of people have gotten a business that don't know what they're doing and they're growing a bunch of shit. Before everybody takes a hit on Oregon, I will tell you that 16 years ago when I went there, I moved there because they had the best cannabis in the world at extremely affordable prices. I could get a giant bag of killer Romulan grown in Oregon for about $50. So it's always been inexpensive there, but the quality has plummeted. We'll talk about that a little bit more. Also talk about licensing California. It looks like we may be able to move forward, but it is just as complicated as it is ever. And um, really watched a really cool show this week on Netflix called Murder Mountain, which talks about Northern California, and it reminded me of a great story I'm going to tell you guys about the first time I went to Northern California on a Greyhound bus. Can you Let's uh, head into the garden and see what's going on. Uh, things are going quite well, but the deep in uh, buds and the shallow in buds, of course, we're perpetual, so we have about six plants coming ready for patients. Uh, we never have a building full, and we never have a large amount of cannabis. Um, we harvest and then we supply to our patients and then we start again. It's a really good system. It's one that I've done for a long time and I'm proud to supply organic cannabis to six patients here locally. The form of oil, um, tinctures, um, and anything else that we need to help. Mainly lately we've just been doing flowers um, and letting the patients do what they want to. Do. So, thanks for always tuning in to the shows. Let's get started. stripes.
because when the branch is on the inside like this in a plant, we pull it to the outside and it'll naturally trellis up. And we can get all the plants, these outside branches, on the outside of the cage. And they'll start turning up, watch. Pull this one out, pull this one out, this one out. Open up this center really well. Like it. Excess weed. The state pot glut is getting worse, but some hope plan to export their product to save the industry. Well, it could save the industry if the fucking government would ease up on these invisible borders in between states. Canada ran the fuck out of weed within a week of getting it, and there are states where it is now medical where you cannot get any weed whatsoever. Uh, now, at least this could be turned into some distillates or some edibles for people. But the government has got to understand that cannabis legalization is coming, no matter what. And they are preventing a lot of good people from being in the industry with their flip-flopping and moving of the target. Uh, and I will tell you, if you watch that show I reference, uh, Murder Mountain, I, it's not about, I stopped watching it after the second episode, but when it talks about the culture of Northern California, it's something that uh, I, I dreamed my whole life until I got up there. And I was able to live that dream for many years growing cannabis, living off the land, supporting myself, uh, and paying my taxes, something that a lot of people in Northern California didn't do in the 60s and 70s. 
But when they changed the law, they forced a lot of people that know how to grow cannabis out. And what is left is a bunch of people who grow large amounts of shitty cannabis. And some people say I'd rather have some cannabis than none at all, but that's not true. Uh, it has become quality over quantity, and until people understand that, they're just going to have a bunch of this cordage sitting around and a bunch of wasted tax revenue as the weed gets destroyed. So, stick to the basics for you growers out there. Grow your cannabis properly. Take care of it. Provide for yourself and your friends. And I think this movement will continue to move forward. anybody get so excited about bugs is me this is from our good friends at biotactics so these are thousand sachets right here and then these are our loose bugs 1000 so we want to make damn sure that we have taken care of it I will tell you that I am completely turned around in my life uh, I would no longer spray harmful pesticides in my grow room ever again um, not even on my clones. I don't believe in clone dip anymore. You can put these on your clones and it is over, baby. Put about 25 to 50 of these in a clone dome and whatever bugs, whatever is in there eating your plants, it will, they will eat them to death. My garden is perfection using these things. So, as far as anything on your plants, rusted mites and mites, unbelievable. Occidentals. Thanks, Andrew, from Biotactics. This is the veg prep area and lighting test area. This is a timber... A Hortilux blue uh, black sail marketing 10 inch cob and over here is a ceramic metal halide so um, we're going to go ahead and treat with our occidentals the nice thing about this is they will actually travel around the plant for us and when we take clones from something they just travel with them so they're basically putting these things in the garden and they lay eggs and basically eat anything that comes around on your plants so I love the technology here and so I'm just going to treat everything and like I say you can shake the leaf later and shake it off so it's a little messy but you just vacuum it up it's not some big deal as I hit my head on the light here, I just kind of salt and pepper them. And so we're going to do the same thing with this entire. Those are big plants, so these plants don't need as many. Just a few. Okay. Like it. There you go. Get the idea. So I'm going to finish up in here. Bugs killing bugs. So one thing you want to do is you want to make sure you shake them up. So that there's even distribution. And then I turn off the fans. And then I simply put a couple of hundred bugs on every plant. Plants done. There you go. It's really non evasive, too. I mean, I've even got the fan blowing a little bit on this one, so I'm just kind of sprinkling and the bugs are trying to, with the filler, just kind of laying down on the plants. 
and then they kind of walk along and do their thing. Walk on by. So I'm in the clone room and I'm going to show you guys something kind of cool. So again, instead of dipping the clones like we have for 20 years, when Azimax or whatever, worse, these clean clones are going to be treated with predator bugs. So about 20, 25 predators in here and it, there would be nothing left. If there's anything in here for them to eat, these things are going to go to work and do their job. So, taking clones of the Tinto, the Hawaiian Skunk 4, and the Hawaiian Skunk 2 tonight. So, I'm going to make um, this plan that I can tell right now is already too tall. And I'm not much of a double topper. Uh, a lot of times it can slow your plants down and everything, but I have some time here. So, I'm going to do something pretty radical on this plant right here. And I'm going to cut the entire top out of it. Now, I like to lay this down here because it had bugs on it still. And so, I don't want the predators to go anywhere. So, I'm kind of shaping this thing like I want it. And then letting the branches kind of lay there for a minute. And then I'll move them later. And the bugs will uh, stay on the plant, which is what we want. So, let's watch this thing get really wide here cover crop coming in. I, I talk about this all the time when we talk about but, uh, flowering a plant, uh, whether it's a seedling or a clone. And, and one of the things we want to look at is stem size. So stem size is so important. So once the stem gets about the size of your index finger, it's a good indication that your plant is big enough to support a reasonable amount of weight up top. Now, uh, my garden is not like a lot of gardens where people run a hundred plants of the same kind. It is made up of um, right now 50 individuals and each one of them are special to us. So we like to look at each one as a, as a plant. And this plant hasn't been cleaned up yet. It will be in just a little bit. But you can see this one also has a stem the size of the index. Same back there and same back there. So these are getting ready flowered in the next like one or two days. Now seeds are going to stretch a lot more than clones and you have to be careful. So we use this little pin as a gauge here. This is the top of our cage. So once the top leaf is above that, uh, we know it's time for seedling to go in. So without that huge rhyme or reason, when a plant gets this big, I like to clean up these fan leaves that are touching the ground. I just don't like the fan leaves to touch the, the ground themselves. So just reach in here and be careful when I'm cutting off, not a stem, and cut the fan leaves off. And just kind of clean it up in here. I believe a neat garden is essential to everything. So keep it nice and clean in here. Prescott, Arizona, uh, about 22 years ago, and uh, I worked for a, a heating and air guy, and I lived down here, and uh, I got injured, and I hurt my leg on a job, and I stayed in a trap for about six weeks at this person's house, and I, I couldn't wait to get out of there, and so I hopped on a bus, a uh, Greyhound bus, I bought a ticket for $96, I used to have this thing called Open Ticket, so I bought it. And I headed up into Northern California. Uh, I ended up in a place called Fields Landing, which is in Humble County. And I stayed with a guy named Joe and, uh, for a couple weeks. And that was my first taste of the Northern California culture. And I did, even 20 years ago, there were people just smoking weed everywhere. And, and the culture intrigued me very much. And I'll never forget riding through the, up the first time in a Greyhound bus sitting in the back. 
I met a guy that had a duffel bag and he had no money whatsoever, like he had no money for food. And he had about 40 pounds of kind bud in a duffel bag. And so I fed him and he kept me high and we drove across America. I'll never forget 101. It's different to me now because I lived up there, but it was magical. The trees start getting bigger and bigger. And all of a sudden, those trees start blotting out in the sun. And the road starts looking thinner because the trees on the side of the road are so fucking big. And you see people just hanging out and enjoying nature and life. And it's, a, it's the damnest thing I've ever seen in my life the first time I saw California. So I'll never forget it and I'll never forget those redwoods. And I'm glad I got to be uh, up there some 25 years ago before uh, it got tainted by some of the some of the craziness that has gone on in our industry. Uh, at that time, people just lived off the land, and grew wheat, and sold wheat. And, uh, but you know, nowadays you can't sell cannabis anymore. It's not like it used to be. There's a lot of us that grow cannabis, but as far as distributing it. Uh, it's the easiest way to get in trouble is to sell cannabis in large amounts. Uh, so a lot of old schoolers like myself have just become caregivers for patients and we don't, we're out of the market now. So I do other things for a living, investing and stuff like that. So. But I will always grow cannabis. There's nothing like standing in the middle of your garden, listening to that hum um, of, the, of the fans and stuff. Or if you're an outdoor person, I've only been lucky enough to grow cannabis for a couple of years outdoor in California and uh, it, it, to stand under a 12 foot plant in the sun and the moonlight when it's real still and the wind's not blowing just to stand there with those giant beasts to hear the wind come across the land and rustle eight to 12 big giant plants like my friends Mendo Dope taught me to grow there's nothing like it and the pride of being a farmer is what drives us all so regardless of where the industry goes um, I'm proud to have my roots in, uh, in uh, the, the Pacific Northwest uh, I come from the south where you can't grow cannabis and when I came to the west coast I experienced a freedom um, that basically turned me into the person I am today so the values of helping people growing cannabis and living off the cannabis plant was instilled in me from California so I owe this guy a lot and I hope they get everything figured out up there so where good people can sell cannabis uh, and not just the corporations take over. Let's go see some stuff. I don't know if you can tell there's four more plants in this location right now. And the Tinto de Verano. And up in the canopy. And everything's looking really nice. Put some more plants in here. Oh, that zinger just got some meat to it. Wow. Tinto, I mean, the uh, Cuve. Chocolate. No, the medium. Medium, yeah. Wow. Look at that. Finally got it right. Probably this big with plants this healthy. I recommend super cropping. So there's so many ways to do it. Um, twisting, bending, snapping. I just come down and find the right part of the plant and brush it. So you feel it snap. This will shoot energy down, slow the plant from growing a little bit. Just come in here and do every top. This takes a few seconds. You to see where the plant is damaged just a little bit. See right here? But it will continue to grow. And it won't get as tall and it will build a little bit stronger base. Now, especially on a plant like this, each one of these has been done. Just slowly, taking my hand. Bang! 
crushing it with your head. Eh? That one visibly snapped. Gotta be careful not to damage it. I'm careful when I do this. Just squeeze just enough. I think it'll come back so strong. New Year's Eve with my ladies. <laughs> Look at that. <sighs> Rotten skunk. She's big as a house. Big as a house. small plants so they need to be fed so I've got five gallons here and I'm gonna mix it up real quick. We're also using the bricks and the mammoth at this point on those four plants. So I'm trying to show you my work area. I have a place to keep my air stones clean. I have fresh water. I have two mixing buckets. It gives me the ability to put, put, put 40 milliliters of each one of these in this bucket. And now I've added my air stone, and I can add about 10 mil of bricks. And I want about 5 mils of metal. So I'll let that stew while I'm getting everything else ready. So that's how I feed small, just small, small four points this big room. water everything because I want to make sure that it's done right. And the canopy trimming up. And oh my god, the colors. This is a peace train. It's absolutely turning purple on the inside of the bud. It's a stacking gorgeous plant. Whoa. Get in here in your canopy and clean everything out. All the small stuff in here has got to go. Get rid of it. Okay. Not a lot, but here's a perfect idea of a sucker. That is a long, thin 
plant. Oh, shoot, there's another one right there. That ain't shit. You want to trim that? Fuck no, you don't want to trim that. Alright, so that's an idea of how you get in here and, and get rid of anything at the bottom. That's perfect. And you can always come back again, but you want to do all this before um, the 21st day of flower. I like to Working on cleaning up the plant, cutting off any fans off the bottom too. Much cleaner. You can see the difference between a plant that has been cleaned up and one that is not. And I will tell you this should have been done, but we've been moving pretty damn fast. And we're gonna leave this one for Jose to learn how to do. So back at it again, I am in the middle of a giant bunch of plants. And I'm cleaning them up so I'm moving the suckers. So in here, we're gonna continue in here. Anything else comes off, it looks like a sucker. This one here. It's too, too low, down low. We'll clean up all of this down here. Until it looks like this one. I had an interesting problem presented to me this week. My good friend. 15 digits known playfully from me as 16. But she got an extra digit. He destroyed his uh, prosthesis again today. Now I want you to listen carefully to me on this. So his insurance company will buy him a new prosthesis. But they will buy him the same shitty prosthesis that they bought him before, like a fucking rubber foot or whatever. He needs some fucking Arnold Schwarzenegger Terminator action. I mean, he needs Nike to build him a leg. He needs a titanium foot and shocks and stuff and as much as everybody wants to start a GoFundMe account you goofball stoners raising three to six thousand dollars ain't gonna do shit this is something that probably cost a hundred hell maybe two hundred and fifty thousand dollars so I am asking you the weed nerd nation if you know anybody that is a uh, orthopedic surgeon a sports medicine doctor that deals in prostheses we need somebody to reach inside their heart and help 15. Again, we can't raise the money to pay for this and five or $10,000 isn't gonna do shit. He destroys these because they give him basically run of the mill uh, prosthesis and he is an athlete and his level of activity is outrageous, but he should not be denied the ability to go run and jump if he wants to. Any of you guys have seen this guy on Instagram? It blows my fucking mind. He can do jumping jacks, he can fucking skip rope you know if you learn to skip rope with one fucking leg then maybe the fucking world should give you a goddamn break so if anybody knows anybody that's in sports medicine prosthesis building shit we need someone to be able to construct one of these things for him and not charge him a lifetime of savings so if you know someone you can reach out to me subcoolseats at gmail.com let's see if we can hook a brother up seen so many things. He's out east now and it's foot broke. It's all up. So if you can imagine what it would be like to want to go move around and have your, your thing that you need to walk break on you and have no way to get it replaced or get the new one replaced. Shout out 15 digits. So 
the battery is about to die, but we are done in this area here. Uh, everything's been cleaned up for pretty much for a hardcore round one. And um, Jose's gonna put everything back for me. We got the new LED lights coming in here soon. So I'm pretty excited about that. So I gotta go get this thing charged up. You can see the difference now. Uh, just so you guys know, we still have a few gnats, not bad, and they're right in the rice hulls, so I didn't like the sand, so a good friend of mine, a weed nerd, sent me these things called tea drops. And, uh, we're going to try them, just a couple of drops, and uh, it, it is an uh, uh, organic product, and so I don't know about Omri, but no PGRs, so we're going to give this stuff a try. He says he really works really good. So a couple drops per gallon. So let's see what happens to the tea drops. Classic example of what we call a sucker. This is, would you want to trim it? Way down here in the canopy, would you want to trim this fucking thing? I don't. It's kind of the way you can determine a sucker. Do you want to trim it? It's below the first line. It's probably got to come out of there. My good friend uh, Miranda was in town for a couple of uh, weeks over like Christmas holidays and we went and sang, saw a lot of cool stuff that I probably wouldn't go and do normally. One of the things we did was we went to the aquarium. It was really fucking cool to see uh, some of the big fish and the sharks. Uh, but did you know I read something and I wanted to discuss it in the channel if possible. Uh, they're not going to do captive whales any longer, ever again, which is good, I think is a good thing. But I was just unaware that we weren't going to do whales anymore, and I didn't realize there were that few whales in the world. Actually, whaling organizations now track uh, how many killer whales and whales are left on the earth, and that means there's just not a lot of them. So, uh, I've never been much of a conservative, so I'm more uh, on the, the earth side of it. But uh, I tell you what, the, the oceans are in a lot of trouble. There's still countries that just dump garbage into the fucking ocean. And, uh, thank God we don't do that. So, if you get a chance to go to an aquarium, take your kids, it was a lot of damn fun, although it was expensive as shit to walk around and look at some uh, fish, but it takes a lot of money, I'm assuming, so go check out your local aquarium. It was a lot of fun. Click, click, whistle, and squawk. It's just a way that a dolphin talks. I call my friends so we can play in a fun-loving dolphin way. Okay, I'm today I'm out at the aquarium in Phoenix. It's a huge complex, guys. Butterflies, dolphins, mirrors, bodies, Pangea. So maybe I'll show you guys a couple clips today. So 
do. Aquarium. I think these are groupers. I think I've eaten these guys. Or either perch. Bluegills. Yep, yep, yep. Bluegills. I have most definitely eaten these. They eat worms. Chuck you, homie. Crappies. I've eaten crappies before. Lots of crappies. Trouts. Trouts. Little baby trouts. Little baby trouts. Big ass trout. It's in the way a lot. Very fucking thing. One stinger is definitely chasing the other, looking for booty. Looks like him over here.
swimming with us. They're like we'll follow you guys. Go look at how pretty that light is. Around the ecosystem, a decrease in the shark population will ultimately affect every other living thing in the ocean. So sharks keep the ocean in balance. More than that, Nathan, changes in the ocean can even cause changes on land. In short, if it affects the sharks, it will eventually affect humans. Well, what does affect the sharks? Several things. Thinning, pollution, and changes in habitat are all factors. But ultimately, humans are the biggest threat to sharks. Sounds like they should be more afraid of us than we are of them. You're right, Nathan. So, busting our butts this week and all year long, we are happy we are on our way to 52 strains on the new menu. We will be at Earl Cup coming up soon here in uh, Arizona. Uh, passing out information and knowledge. Stop by and see us. Should be a lot of fun. The whole crew will be in. People often say they want to stop by and get high with us and hang out with us. Well, there you go, Earl Cup. I'll be there all day long on Saturday. We have released some pretty amazing stuff. Limited release of Raspberry Jelly, which is a Raspberry Smash selected F2. Also, Hazy Margarita, working with a little bit of Mr. Nice Gear. The Badger is making some bad ass crosses. Cherry Lemonade was released this week as well. Cherry Lemonade is uh, the Cherry High OG times the Jack the Ripper. Wicked, we made it before the fire, got it tested, and then the seeds burn up in the fucking safe. So, pump about that. Uh, all new packing coming together, new pop-ups, artwork. I would like to thank Chris Can Do Designs, uh, as well as JD Artist for some of the amazing art that uh, I've been putting together, we're putting online for the 2019 seed promotion season. Gotta stay relevant. 52 strains will be on the 2019 menu. That's fucking some serious work. I'm very proud uh, of all my people that I work with. Uh, Jim and Joel Northstar, um, of course the Badger, Kyle Cushman, um, OG Rascal, uh, GG4 Official. All of those people, uh, we work together uh, in different ways and I could not do it without Adam. Subcools the Dank is becoming a major player in the industry in this state and a couple other states. Thanks to my friendship with some people who are working but doing two, which is starting to flower really fast, I'll tell you that. We went on down the road and then cleaned everything up. Zayhaf looking phenomenal. Wow. What a nice point. Checking out another one here. Checking out good. Yeah. Sweet tea. Gorgeous. Another zinger over there. Woohoo! Doctor Who. Wow. Wow. That smells really good where I'm standing. It's like a mix of about five different things. Ooh, right there. She's pretty. Wow. 
Good job, man. Nice and meaty in here. You just got zinger all over the place up in here. <laughs> oh, cool. Can you see my finger? dinner together. My favorites. You go girl. Always changes. Don't die. You need me to hold you? Nah. Alright. It's getting steady. Alright, it's crazy shit going on as you guys are watching the show. So this 1000 watt Portalux blue that we've used for so long, um, we're getting rid of it. So that's 9 amps move. The timber lights are going to be here on Tuesday. You guys will see what we do with those. And black sail lighting is coming in tomorrow. So we are getting rid of this 1,000 watt light. It's really hot. Where did you want to sit? I right there. We excluded her because she wasn't here. Huh? She's off. <laughs> huh? Huh? So back to this. Uh, cloning situation you can see how beautiful this clone is she is fully rooted so you can't say we're waiting too long can't let her long that but this soil right here is the dirt martini so this is not big roots so it doesn't have uh, compost and back guano and other things and in the dirt martini you add this um, later he has a charge pack that you add in it so this soil here should technically have less nutrients in it than other soils we use and so let's see if this transition is better using a soil that has less nutrients in it cannabis hunter here uh, in the deep end of the pool as Subby likes to say things are looking rather good some amazing things are being tested in this patient garden this is the peace train it smells like electricity I've had four or five people walk over and smell it over my shoulder they're like what the fuck it smells like a battery the most amazing blueberry electricity smell look at this wonderful Kool-Aid here uh, big six foot Sheila Oh my god, this is a mother plant of the cuvee. Oh, just a nice plant. Lovely, lovely room full of giant plants. All happy and bug free. Well, not exactly bug free. I know Sobby's got those good bugs in here too, taking care of everything from biotactics. That's all the bugger talks about nowadays is good bugs. I just want to step in real quick. Slip this in before the end of the show. You know the cannabis hunter. Always looking out for the kindest birds. So we'll be seeing you on the next show. The cannabis hunter signing off.
memory card ran out. So as I was saying, Kyle Cushman, OG Rascal, uh, GG4 Official, those people are, are crucial to what we're doing um, in here in Arizona. Uh, um, because of the bowling alley, we'll be functional in about seven or eight days. And we will be growing those clones under a branded license, producing uh, high quality tested cannabis. Uh, and so it's really cool to be able to run Kyle Strawberry and OG Rascal's White Fires. Really, really, really fun to be part of this industry, the new industry, but man, is it complicated. Um, we'll head back to the bowling alley Monday so I can get some new footage. All the sheetrock is up. Um, and uh, about once a week, uh, Eli comes on and streams on the YouTube, uh, on the Instagram live, and we do a walkthrough. And oh my God, that place is massive. The $80,000 fire extinguisher still blows me away to meet code. So. Eight. Eight. Full of cops all going in because they've taken the lights down. I'm going to redo the entire area. We're also going to put this blood drive in to the tent, which we were going to use for drying. And now we're going to convert it back again. We're going to actually run one plant in this underneath the uh, black sail top. That uh, it wouldn't fit in the bracket actually because it's we're, huge. Yeah. So yeah. Where, where did you come up with the idea for cannons? I mean, big ass cobs because it dude i got it like as soon as you said it, i was like okay this makes sense bro well, i was uh i was the customer service and tech support rep for rapid led and uh i talked such an amazing job dude i talked to hundreds if not thousands of guys you know going through their first diy build trying to figure out what to buy wading through the fucking swamp that is the LED grow light market, man. You oh, yeah. Know. oh yeah, I mean I got a LED, I got a light bright in the other closet still. So. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. which which you know I have never been that guy. Let me back up. When I was in Georgia 30 years ago, and I started with a 150 watt grow light from Ace Hardware, I wish I'd have had a light bright. You know, I just went fast past it real quick. So you're able to achieve now the smaller ones here, which they're not small. What's the amperage on them? 2.3? Um, yes, 2.3 2.3, and then the bigger one's going to be a 3 amp. That's right. So we'll get four of these hung for, a, for around 8 amps in the vegetative area. And then we're going to place the big giant one you got there into the uh, gorilla tent with a plant that we know how it works and uh, know how it grows. We've grown it here and see how it performs. Yeah, man. Um, I would not. I, I would probably not try to fill an entire four by four with with just the one cannon, yeah. even with the driver <laughs> upgrade. But, dude, the whole one light, one plant concept. And we'll scrog it out, obviously. Yeah. I mean, we'll net it up. So one of the things that I talk about, uh, I mean, this is somewhat of a commercial for you because I appreciate everything you're doing, but but also, I mean, you know, the weed nerds about being informative. So. We were talking about these the other day, and, and I have friends that are, just can't even believe that I'm going to hang um, this many in my house. But the big thing that I talk about that everybody needs to start with is a 1,000 watt light, costs around $400. And then you got to buy a bulb for it. If you're old school, once a year, a lot of guys say every six months. You're talking over a 10 year period of time, thousands of dollars to replace the bulbs. Now, this thing's actually got a 12 year warranty. Um. It's uh, it's five years. It's five years. Five okay, years. right. Yeah. But they last twelve years. Well, nah, man. I would probably say uh, okay. So you want to switch out that cob after five years? Yeah. But I mean, the rest of it's pretty much gonna last forever. You know, you really? have to exchange your driver. But um, yeah, and that's something that I'm actually gonna be working on is really step by step video instructions on how to switch out the cob. Okay. And then 
you're just back up and running. At so a, five years without a bulb replacement. Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay. That's why you got to get the guy that's got the facts, so you don't just yeah, make, yeah. make up numbers. Yeah, five years without a bulb replacement. Um, and going back to your question earlier about how I came up with the idea, man, it's just like I remember actually watching you on GrowTube Roundtable uh, talking about how you like a big, powerful light. And it's funny because I was like, dude. The only dude on there that refuses to use LEDs is also the only one that's speaking my language. Right. Growers want a big, powerful, simple light that you can hang up and play. It's what we're used to. And I got to tell you, we were talking yeah. about it off camera a while ago, and I don't want to dog anybody. I mean, I'm knocked the shit out of myself on frame LEDs. And one of the things I like about your singular bulb idea is it's it's out of my way. Yeah. You know, uh, I've got another uh, manufacturer coming in, which I love the light, timber lighting. I love it. But his frame's going to be a little more complicated to mount. You're like one fucking chain, one hook. Um, I'm sure that grid I'm going to have probably four, four, and that's, I got to tell you, the first time I hung a big frame mount, that was my biggest complaint. I was like, what a pain in the ass, you know, but saying, the yeah. benefits in this house are that we trip a hundred amp breaker and we've got to get off of this power grid. Yeah. And uh, I saw, I don't know if you know this, but I saw Kyle do a, a, a trailer full With of the fluence. I saw a nice that. trailer full of weed. I mean, I don't care what you say. I mean, we're all we're all weed growers in essence, and that was the trailer full of tanks. So yeah. All right. Well, we'll be back when uh, we get everything on. Um, we're centering everything now over here, and um, should be kind of a cool show. There we go. The big boy. Got the big boy. The I like 320. It. I like it. That's cool. All right. Well, we'll yeah. see it on in a minute. Nerds have been following us for a little while. I just want to take the time. Just can you tell us just a little bit more about yourself, your company, and where they can go to find out more about your product. Uh, so my name is Keith. My company is Black Sail, BlackSailMarket.com or on Instagram at BlackSailMarket. That's S-A-I-L. Uh, the pirate theme, I don't know, man. It's near and dear to my heart and I wanted to break off and do something original. Um, and the needs I saw were uh, bigger, more powerful, cheaper, easier to use. And so I built the cannon, man. I love the way it's easy to hang. We were talking about it while we were eating dinner. It's just easy to hang, and to me, that's a big feature. Now, it's kind of funny. We were talking about pirates. This is the blood drive. So we're going to drag a canopy across here and attach it. You can see where our canopy goes. And we're going to spread this thing out, and we're going to run this whole thing. Uh, I'll probably switch it to 12, 12 tomorrow once I get it shaped. And we're going to watch this thing the whole way through. So pretty exciting. Yeah. Three amps. Uh, yeah, I'm really excited. Yeah, we put a bigger driver the next step up in the Meanwell HLG series, which is the best driver you can get. It's all I will use, all top shelf parts. I do not fuck around. I do not cut corners. I don't fuck around with specs. This is black sale. We do things different. Um, but yeah, this one's got about three amps on it. It's running a little harder than I would think you would want, but I'm getting feedback that people need more heat in the winter in the northern states. And I can turn this down, like you said. Oh, I got yeah. an adjuster on it. Yeah, you can dim it down to 240 like a regular Canon, but right cool. now it's running at 310. And we've replaced everything in here um, with four Canon, so we're going to hang one LED here. So no more big lights in this room. So it's mainly a heat issue. So we'll see how it all shapes up, and I can already tell you it's cooler in here. So. Awesome. Thanks, brother. Thank Thanks you, for man. coming out and giving us personal service. I mean, I never had a light manufacturer come and hang the light bulb with me. So. Dude, I wanted to come out. I wanted to see the pool, honestly. Well, we got to take you down now and let you see the buds. Oh, so. hell yeah, man. All yeah, right, cool. Let's check it out. Right. It's time for a little plant bondage here and time to get a trellis. I'm not a scrogger or a trellis guy, so but I'm sure I can pull this net down and bend this thing out really good and want to fill this whole tent. So that's my goal here. Let's see. Yeah, that's a pretty good start. We get the light on and start training one in each one of the holes. I think this one can come here. Just a little bit of time. So, yeah. If you follow me online, you can't have missed this discussion about uh, the one plant that reacted so badly um, to dipping not 60 days ago. So this is it. This is the Doctor Who. And as you can see, it's still unhappy. Look at that plant. That's a strawberry cough. That's a Hawaiian skunk. This is a 
purple punch, this is a cuvee. These plants are all super happy, and this one plant is not. And it's almost like it actually got damaged. And I can tell you that if this plant doesn't pick up today, I'm gonna kill it. I'm gonna kill it off for good, because I'm tired of fucking with it. I love it when I have roots on everything. So we have everything duplicated, which was super important, because these were clones that went into flower and we didn't have copies. So the Tinto was something I really wanted. So this is making me happy. When I started back growing, I was so excited to have so many strains. Um, and I'm just now getting back to where I can make some really good decisions. So this Who clone, which is, for whatever reason, always looks unhappy, is no longer in our number count. We won't climb from it anymore. So next, go ahead and top this uh, plant here. Hawaiian diesel skunk, so that'll give it a really nice shape there. And it's got some more on top. So I'm going to get in and top this one. These are going to be for shaping moms, so I want to get in here and get a nice form on. A lot of times I won't top until I transplant, but these are going to be a little while in here, so give this one a couple more days to come back. This one's just transplanted. Let's purple punch the side. So let's get in here. Right into that good node. So that'll start bushing out. So we'll see these on the next episode growing up. One thing that's super important, especially when you're uh, caregiver is to keep a really good accurate count of what you're growing plant numbers and everything so we have a really good system for it well what a great week I guess Monday we really start back to work I think a lot of people took off that extra couple of days after the New Year's banks investors and stuff like that Weed Nerd Nation continues to grow. I see people growing cannabis all over the world. I get people writing letters still from places I've never been. I think that's fucking bad. Check out the specials at uh, JBC Seed Bank. Also, Attitude Sweet Tea will be in Attitude this week. Of course, Struggle with Kyle Cushman. Pretty, pretty, I was sitting there last night looking at the pool going, you know, I started all this from sea. And I could not be happier. So I could never be prouder of my line or uh, what I'm doing right now. You can get in touch with me, go to subpool.com. There's a contact information right there on the site. You can just click on it and send me a message anytime you want to. You can send me a text, answer it. I don't answer my phone very often. Um, I try to answer as many people as I can, as quick as I can, and I don't sleep a lot. So if you're having trouble getting in touch with me, you're not trying very hard. Uh, somebody this week said, wow, you answer people at four o'clock in the morning? I do. <laughs> Try to get to them as long as they're not rude. So, thanks for watching.